ECR, Mr. Tenok. Uh, thank you, Madam President. And I too would like to congratulate Mr. Grzyb on his uh, excellent and extensive report, which looks at the role of the Special Envoy on the promotion of freedom of religion from all its aspects. And I would particularly like to uh, uh, congratulate uh, Jan Fiegel, my old friend. We go back a very long uh, time indeed to the days in which he was the negotiator for Slovakian accession. And uh, it just shows how long I've been in this parliament. Sadly, I'm now near the end of my political career with the tragedy of Brexit over the, just over the horizon. But when I was first elected here in 1999, almost 20 years ago, I was regarded as somewhat eccentric within the EPP, which was then where we were as British Conservatives, for suggesting the need for a report on religious freedom, particularly for Christians in the world. It was regarded as a bizarre concept. But of course, we've come a very long way in the last 20 years, and I, and I welcome that very strongly. Uh, certainly, uh, Jan Fiegel has brought an enormous amount of e energy and dedication. Uh, he himself, being a man of faith, a very devout uh, Christian himself, he has brought his own personal uh, personality and energy to the job. I think we can all congratulate him for that. But I agree with my uh, Liberal colleague. I'm not entirely clear what the purpose would be served by upgrading or changing the status to an EU special representative. Uh, particularly as there would be perceived overlap with the human rights special representative, but maybe I need more clarification on that from the respect of my group. But certainly the role in interreligious dialogue is a very important one. The uh, liaison with the UN special rapporteur, I think uh, Mr. Figo has done a fantastic job there with the uh, current incumbent, as we've heard from the uh, online uh, intervention uh, from London. So I think overall, I think this is a, a sign of the importance that the European Union, with its values, that it attaches to the, 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 to the belief in religious freedom. But of course, there is also the issue of no belief. I mean, I think that's also an important point to make, that as much as, you know, we want, you know I come from a, a believing background myself, but, of course, there are many who don't want to believe and don't believe, and they should be entitled to that as well. So I think it has to be uh, both ways. And, of course, in many parts of the world, as you pointed out, uh, that you know, things like apostasy remain uh, a capital offence. And I think that's a very delicate issue. And I think that I, again, pay tribute to Mr. Figa, who's managed to balance the very delicate and sensitive issues concerning religion or no religion, uh, etc., particularly in parts of the world where you know, uh, giving up on your religion is regarded as, as a, a very deep offence. So uh, uh, good luck uh, in the next parliament, the next commission. Uh, sadly, the Brits won't be here. We've always taken a big interest in this issue over the years, uh, and I hope that uh, this particular mandate uh, goes from strength to strength, because clearly uh, there is a, a need, a gap internationally for these kind of jobs that Mr. Mr. Figel has so well uh, delivered for the European Union over the last few years. Thank you.